best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, Scholastic. I, people get irritated when I talk about Scholastic. I'm not entirely sure why people get pissed, but they do. Uh, but the reality is uh, Scholastic is doing a real bang-up job right now. And case in point, there's uh, some articles, some text going around about uh, manga sales. And in 2021, manga did incredibly well. Sold tons and tons of titles. And it did. Manga had a huge growth. Yeah, some people are citing a 280% growth for manga in 2021. And and for the record, I'm not trying to kind of poo-poo or hand wave across because that's obviously an amazing number. It's good dollars. It's good growth. Uh, but it is uh, 280 is not unprecedented. It's actually a result of when you market things properly, when you have a hit on your hands, you can sell a lot of books. When you have good distribution channel, you can sell a lot of books. What did manga do? It got itself into lots of different places it would sell. It's got itself into Target. It got itself into Walmart. It was in Barnes & Noble. Yes, it was in comic stores as well. Yeah. That's not me trying to downplay manga success. It's me giving manga a compliment. Like, they're not idiots. They actually get their material into places that move a lot of volume of books. It's called being smart. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, and, and screw you, the people who get really pissy about this comment. <laughs> um, when I say, hey, manga owes a lot of its success to being really smart about how it runs the market, and I get people coming at me going, hey, Perch, F you. The reason why manga is successful is because it's not woke. It's like, Jesus, people, God, you're obsessed at this point. Look, this is common sense. You have a comic book in a direct market comic book store. You have a comic book in the direct market comic store and Walmart. Which do you think is going to sell better? I'll, I'll wait. Think it over. Think it over real quick. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Yeah, no shit. The thing that's going into Walmart is going to sell a lot more. Of course it is. And when I say that, I'm not saying, so they don't deserve the success. I'm saying good for Viz or whoever you know, push to get manga into Walmart, clearly that's somebody who knows how to do their job. And the person at Marvel or DC or Image or wherever that can't seem to figure that stuff out, that person deserves to get fired. But regardless, I, I'm not talking about manga again. Um, the bigger news in all this, to me, it's what's going on in Scholastic. So Scholastic, of course, has Dogman, and we talk about that. Dogman just outsells everything because it's a beast and because also... You know, it's a fairly lighthearted, simple story about a, you know, dog policeman. And it turns out that when you market a cartoon dog policeman that has fun adventures to kids who are between 5 and 10, they tend to go for it. It's weird how that works. It's like, it's the craziest thing. But regardless of Dogman, there's other books that sell well at Scholastic as well. And one of those is Miles Morales Shockwaves, which is by Disney Press, uh, which is not exactly Marvel, but it's a different kind of avenue of, of Marvel. In other words, this is Marvel licensing their work out through the Disney Press. And uh, Miles Morales sold a ridiculous amount of copies through Scholastic. Um, it, it sold by all accounts... Uh, from what I've gathered, close to half a million, 420,000 copies of Miles Morales Shockwaves. And if you go to Amazon, you see it selling healthily there as well. Now, for reference, Miles Morales Shockwaves, as distributed through Scholastic and through that kind of book channel, and if you read that comic, you'll notice Miles Morales Shockwaves Feels a little bit like uh, Into the Spider-Verse. It's a fairly, I would say, benign Miles Morales story. He has adventures, he has teenage problems, and then he has some more adventures. And that's pretty much what the book is. And this comic, Shockwaves, for reference, is selling roughly 10 times the amount of copies as the regular monthly Miles Morales comic. So the Saladin Ahmed Miles Morales comic, the floppy, that you get off of, uh, you know, in Marvel, uh, that sells in the 40,000 copies. 
The Scholastic uh, version, the one that comes out there, sells 420 plus thousand copies, 10 times the amount. Okay, so what does that mean? Does that mean that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, it, it, that comic books, so I, I, I saw this data point come out and some people in comics said, well, this is why we should move to graphic novels. It's like, no, that's, that's, that's the worst possible take. If you read the comics, it becomes really clear what two factors helped it sell so much more. Number one, Scholastic is a great channel for selling books to young, you know, young adults, kids. They have the marketplace. They have a lot more, you know, they, basically they're going to the schools in a lot of cases. They have the deals at Walmart and Target and they're, they're pumping books out there. That's going to do better than a comic book shop. Now, I'm not saying you abandon the comic book shop. I'm just saying you get comics more places. It gets more eyeballs. It gets people excited about comics. It's weird how that works. But anyway, that's, that's you know, number one. Number two, if you read the books, Miles Morales Shockwaves is a fairly, again, it doesn't break the internet or break the world, but it's fairly straightforward adventure. Miles Morales has a problem. He's got to protect his secret identity. He has some adventures. He, again, he has some teenage problems trying to fit in. And then he, you know, it, he, he has it. That, that's it. That's, that's, what's go, that's what's going on in that book. It's very simple. But any kid picking up that comic knows what's going on. It's very easy to digest what's in that book. However, if you go to Miles Morales' Spider-Man, the comic book, he's currently in adventure where he's got this goopy uh, clone brother that is kind of made out of mush. And they're going on a multi-universal adventure where they're hopping through space-time. And, you know, they, they, at the end of the issue, they encounter a, uh, you know, an a ultimatum, a villain who's kind of dressed up like Hank Pym from the Ultimates. And they're not really sure what's going on there. And, and it, it, then the comic ends and come back in 30 days and we'll get some more. Oh, and by the way, he's kind of sort of dating the Vulture's granddaughter or niece or something but but i mean it's it the, the comic book is it's hard to digest even what's going on in that book it's a comic book adventure sure but it's not exactly encouraging it's not uh it doesn't encourage new readers to come to the pages it it's just kind of there and this is something that's playing out all over the place. Um, you know, as as DC kind of struggles, as Marvel struggles, uh, there are plenty of versions of Marvel and DC that are doing just fine. Clear example of that: the stuff of Scholastic, the stuff that's being distributed through you know Walmart, Target. If you want Marvel or DC or Image or an Indie or whoever to compete strongly and do well against manga, you're going to have to get it into some other stores. You're going to have to get it to places where there's lots of audience and, and Walmart would be a good pick. Um, you're also going to have to write stories that when people pick them up, when people pick up the comic and, and read it, it's easy to digest. They understand what's going on and it's age appropriate. If you're marketing this as adults, then fine. You tell an adult story. If you're trying to Put something into the school for kids. Have a lighthearted, fun kid adventure that is not uh, stupid. That is not you know trying to throw in a bunch of social issues. You know the crazy thing is if you're trying to sell a comic to somebody in third grade, they do not want to know about uh, all the stuff that the twenty somethings think they care about. They do not want to know about racial injustice. They don't want to know about you know, gender equality, they, they want to have a fun adventure. And if you're a clever writer, you can actually do a good job of introducing gender equality or racial justice in these comics without making it a, a sermon on those things. Superman, Batman, lots of comics did a great job of promoting, you know, uh, fair play, uh, you know, saying that racism was bad saying that sexism was bad. I mean, they, they did a good job of introducing these concepts without making you want to vomit as a kid. Kids just want adventures. 
But it's it's interesting looking at these numbers. Anyway, um, that's that's what's going on right now in the stores. Why is manga winning? Why are some of these Marvel Press you know books winning? Because they they talk to the audience they're going after and they do it effectively. That's it. Anyway, let me know what you think of all of it, and thanks for listening.